The vast Colorado River Basin blankets a 246,000 square mile area that includes parts of Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming, as well as portions of the states of Baja and Sonora, Mexico. Water delivered from the Colorado serves nearly 40 million municipal and industrial customers, 22 Native American tribes, and more than 6 million acres of irrigated agriculture. In addition, seven wildlife refuges, four national recreation areas, and 11 national parks depend on the river for vital water supplies. The river serves to link resources and people across the basin. The Colorado is one of the most controlled and carefully managed rivers in the nation. And over the past century, tens of billions of dollars of infrastructure investments have resulted in dramatic increases in the resources derived from this river system. Today, the Colorado River itself has 14 dams and nine reservoirs, and the river system supports hundreds of miles of associated canals and related infrastructure. The Colorado's flows also drive hydroelectric facilities with a combined capacity of over 4,200 megawatts. The power these facilities generate serves millions of customers throughout the West, while at the same time offsetting the need to consume fossil fuels. Within the Colorado River Basin is an incredibly diverse portfolio of natural and man-made capital that if appraised on the basis of the goods and services it provides, could reasonably be valued in the tens of trillions of dollars. And every year, the billions of dollars of benefits that these assets generate in the form of water supplies, electric power, food, recreation, flood control, and more, flow to peoples and economies both in and outside the basin. This annual yield is critical to the health and stability of much of the southwestern United States and northwestern Mexico. Awareness and appreciation of these economic valuations helps to underline the importance of continued investment in the basin's capital. But today, the basin's river system faces unprecedented threats. The most serious of these is an extreme and protracted drought. Now, in its 15th year, the river has suffered lower than normal inflows to the system. Western water professionals have long known that these supplies are vulnerable, but few could have predicted the declines we've experienced. In fact, this drought, which began in 2000, has resulted in the lowest 14-year flows ever recorded. And based on tree ring studies, the lowest over any comparable period in almost 900 years. Another area of serious concern is overallocation on the river. The lower basin states of Arizona, California, and Nevada combined use roughly 1.2 million acre feet more water each year than are received from normal Lake Powell releases and side inflows. This disparity between the water available to the lower basin and the water that's consumed is called a structural deficit, and it seriously threatens the long-term viability of water deliveries and power generation in the basin as a whole. The current structural deficit has resulted in a drop in Lake Mead water levels of roughly 12 to 15 feet for every year these overdrafts have continued. And it provides increased impetus for equalization, which is the release of additional water from the upper basin's Lake Powell Reservoir to maintain equal amounts of water storage in both lakes. Without equalization, additional inflows from upstream reservoirs or corrective action, Lake Mead could fall below 1,000 feet sometime in the next four to eight years, even with deliveries to Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico being reduced to the maximum extent specified in current guidelines and agreements. At that level, water supplies for Las Vegas will be in jeopardy and Hoover Dam hydropower generation will also be severely impacted. This scenario would increase the likelihood of conflict among the seven basin states, the U.S. government, and Mexico. Rapid population increases are another challenge and one that's placing an ever-increasing load on long-term water supplies in the basin. The southwestern United States has experienced explosive growth over the last several decades, and based on projections from various water districts throughout the seven basin states, by the year 2050, the population dependent on the Colorado River and its tributaries could grow by more than 20 million people. 
the likely result would be an increase in water demand of as much as 5 million acre-feet annually. And this does not include anticipated growth in those areas of Mexico receiving Colorado River water. And the challenges don't end there. The looming specter of climate change carries with it a high level of uncertainty and could result in an even drier future. According to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, on average, basin temperatures could increase by as much as 5 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit during the latter part of the 21st century. And by 2050, mean annual runoff could drop by 8.5 percent, making it even more difficult to meet future demands. The combination of drought, climate change, population growth, and structural deficit places the river system at great risk despite current approaches and existing programs and agreements. In the past, basin managers have relied on the storage in Lake Mead and Lake Powell, the two largest reservoirs in the United States, to ensure reliable deliveries. But when the basin situation is considered in aggregate, it's clear that this storage could easily prove inadequate. Each state and water user has been preparing to address the impacts of drought and shortage. For example, the recovery of underground water supplies will provide some relief for certain locations. However, when we look at the current threats to the Colorado River system, it's clear that no one state or user or sector can address these problems independently. The problems are too complex and too varied. What will work is the application of a range of innovative solutions generated and managed through cooperative efforts on a basin-wide scale. Ultimately, there are only three paths of action for addressing shortfalls in the basin. Reducing demands, increasing supplies, and reducing system losses. Realistically, all three will be needed to completely address the problems. While the increasing of supplies, or augmentation, can be an effective long-term solution, new, large-scale water development projects, such as seawater desalination facilities, may take a decade or more to implement. Therefore, actions to move these efforts forward need to begin now if we are to avoid dropping to critical reservoir elevations. Efforts to use water more efficiently through conservation and other programs and to develop alternative local supplies are just as important to our water future as the more complex multi-state projects. But in the near term, the only options that can have significant impacts are those that will reduce system losses and consumptive uses. The Colorado River system, which links states, water users, and nations, is stretched to its limit. Overallocation, drought, climate change, and ever-increasing demands mean that actions must be taken now to prevent harmful future shortages. Water managers will continue to work with the U.S. Department of the Interior, the Basin Tribes, environmental groups, and our neighbors in Mexico to create and implement new solutions for the range of serious challenges facing the basin. And actions will be required from all Colorado River water users to ensure the sustainability of this vital resource. Conservation, cooperation, and wise water planning are crucial, as is continued significant investment in the basin's wide range of assets. These measures will not only ensure sustainability, but also help grow the basin's beneficial output in years to come.